I'm Hani Fareed. I've been called a digital detective because in addition to being a university professor, I work with law enforcement and national security agencies around the world to determine if images and videos are real or not. Think Sherlock Holmes, but with a laptop instead of a magnifying glass and, well, sadly not as cool. I've worked on cases that range from analyzing photos of an accused presidential assassin to analyzing photos to determine the identity of kidnappers and bank robbers to what I call digital ballistics, where I ballistically link a photograph to a specific phone in the same way that the police can link a fired bullet to a specific gun. It used to be that only a few people in the world needed to be skilled at analyzing images like this, but now, with so much fake information on the internet, we all need to be better digital detectives. So let's get started. This is a crash course in digital detection, and I'm here to train you to be a better digital detective. You'll learn how to spot the digital fakes, be them photos, videos, or stories on the web. Lesson one, what's the impact of fake photos and videos? You may be surprised to learn that photos have been manipulated since the 1800s, almost as long as photography has been around. Back then, manipulating an image required a lot of time and skill, and only a few people in the world could create a convincing fake. Today, though, with over 7 billion mobile devices in circulation around the world, and with more powerful software and apps for manipulating images, things have gotten a lot more complicated. And it's becoming easier and easier to create fake images and videos, and it's becoming easier and easier to instantaneously spread this fake content around the world on YouTube and on Reddit and on Instagram. Lots of fake images are just funny and relatively harmless. But not all fake images are harmless. The fashion and beauty industry has been criticized for creating unrealistic body images, which scientists have linked to real health problems for young children and teens. That's one small step for man. Fake photos have led to bizarre and, in some cases, dangerous conspiracies. And because so much news now comes from citizen journalists and social media, it's getting harder to believe what we see or hear online. You may be too young to vote, but soon you won't be. And so you should know that fake news and fake images and fake videos are impacting elections here in the United States and around the world. And this poses a serious threat to our democracy and our country. Lesson two, how are fake photos and videos made? To be a good detective, you have to understand your opponent, in our case, the forger. We'll start with a basic understanding of how images and videos can be manipulated. When it comes to manipulating images, software like Photoshop is the first stop for forgers. In the right hands, Photoshop can be a powerful tool for creating fakes. With relatively little effort, a forger can splice my head onto somebody else's body to make it look like I'm doing something that I never did. Or they can add an object to an image, making it look like I'm holding something that I never was. Or they can remove an object from an image, dramatically changing the context. Manipulating videos is a bit more difficult than manipulating images. One reason for this is that a video is made up of between 24 and 30 frames for every second of video. This means that even a short three minute video contains 5,400 individual images. But even with the added difficulty, fake videos are not uncommon. The internet is riddled with amazing videos from our former president kicking down a door to the Pope performing a magic trick and an eagle snatching a child from the park and a crazy man catapulting himself 100 feet into the air and landing in a baby pool, all of which are fake. All of these images and videos that I've shown so far were created by skilled digital artists. These days, though, a new technology has emerged. Artificial intelligence, or AI systems, are being built to automatically create fake sounds and fake images and fake videos, so-called deep fakes. All of these people, for example, don't exist. These images were created entirely by a computer. AI systems can also manipulate audio by learning to create speech in a specific person's voice. And AI systems can also generate really realistic fake videos. There's three types of AI fake videos that you should know about. Lip Sync, Face Swap, and Puppet Master. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. In the Lip Sync deepfake, someone impersonates another person's voice, and then the AI system generates what that person's mouth should look like to be consistent with the new words. You can literally put words into someone's mouth. It's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. In the face swap deepfake, one person's face is replaced with another person's face, and this has led to awesome memes in which the actor Nick Cage is being inserted into as many movies as possible. And in the Puppet Master fake, one person controls the appearance of another person. You can probably see why these fakes are so powerful, because they can create videos of just about anyone doing just about anything. Lesson three, detecting fake content. Let's now start by talking about how to tell the difference between the real and the fake. Tip one, fact check. 
There's a lot of really good fact-checking sites out there, including Snopes.com and PolitiFact.com, and it is amazing what a quick search on one of these sites will dig up. Before liking, before retweeting or sharing online, take the extra minute to make sure that you're not being fooled and not contributing to what are sometimes really hurtful lies against other people. Tip two, reverse image search. A lot of fake images are recirculated that keep popping up every few months or years. And a really easy thing that you can do to determine if an image is fake or not is use Google's or Microsoft's reverse image search that instead of searching based on words, searches for images similar to what you upload. This is an easy way to track down a previous fake, and it's one of the first things that I do in any investigation. Tip three, metadata. Metadata is data about data. Every digital image has a lot of it. The metadata can tell you the make and the model of the camera that was used to take an image. It can also tell you the date and the time and the photo was taken and the GPS location of where the photo was taken. The metadata may also show you if the image was edited by Photoshop, as well as the date and the time that the picture was changed. If the picture does have metadata, it'll be stored in the image file, and there are many online programs that will allow you to see this information. Some websites, like Facebook, remove the metadata, so not every image will have it, but when it's there, it can provide valuable information to any investigation. Tip four, while it's possible to create fake images and videos, some fakes are simply easier to create than others. When trying to determine if an image or a video is fake, ask yourself, how easy would it have been to make this? For example, as we've already seen, it's relatively easy to splice one person's head onto another person's body. And it's also relatively easy to create a composite image of two people standing next to each other. But it's far more difficult to create a fake of those two people embracing because that requires editing the entire body. The same is true of video. We know that AI can create videos of a person talking, but it's not yet possible to create a video of that same person slam dunking a basketball. Tip five, and this one's important, slow down. In addition to becoming a better digital detective, you should also make an effort to be a better digital citizen. This means that we should all think carefully about what we read online is real or not before sharing and commenting. Check the date of the story. If it's years old, it may be a fake story that's been circulating online for a long time. And don't be fooled by the headline of a story. They're meant to grab your attention and may not tell the whole story, so take the time to read the rest of the story. The news that you see on social media has been provided for you based on what you've looked at before. And that means that the stories will all be similar. This does not give the other side of the story. Finally, stories that make amazing statements need to have the evidence to back them up. Do your best to check out the facts from other places that you trust. And if you aren't sure about a story or a video or a picture, just don't share it. Before I go, here's a quick quiz to test your chops. Is this photo real or fake? feel free to pause the video and think a little bit about it. First thing I do is search for the words helicopter, shark, and Snopes to see if the story's been debunked. The second thing I do is a reverse image search to see where this photo has shown up before. And the third thing is, one thing I've learned over the past 20 years is that images with sharks are almost always fake, so beware. I hope you've picked up a thing or two about how to spot fake photos, videos, and stories on the web. I also hope that you'll be a responsible digital citizen and do your part in reducing the flood of fake news. That, in the end, is the job of a digital detective. Mm -hmm.